Hi, I'm Lowell Wild Jr. Uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating a scarf aching procedure. It's a procedure that I've done my entire career, 27 years. Uh, I do it on nearly all non-arthritic bunions that I take care of. Uh, I've had amazing success. My patients post-operatively are able to weight bear immediately. Uh, we take off bandages at a week and we put them in gym shoes one week after surgery. They start physical therapy at that time. As a result, it has been my go-to procedure for the entirety of my career, and I have thousands and thousands of happy patients. I'm really excited to add osteofiber to the mix, uh, and I'll demonstrate that today. First, I've outlined the incisional approach. We do a dead medial approach, which is the interface between the dorsal and the plantar skin. The way I decide where my incision is, is I put my finger and thumb on the dorsal and plantar aspect of the uh, proximal phalanx, and I split the difference. And then I come to the metatarsal, split the difference, and all the way back. My capsule orphy is a long incision as far proximal as the periosteum. And I take it and we free up the periosteum and cut it distally. To expose the metatarsal head. We leave the tissue intact to the phalanx for later repair. We will then come and free up the periosteum from the dorsal aspect of the metatarsal, going proximally for screw placement, and then plantarly, we free it up to the full extent of the osteotomy. For the bigger the deformity, the longer I make my incision, all the way back to the plantar flare of the metatarsal. This will ensure for later stability of the osteotomy. So then when I go to make my osteotomy, I look at the head of the metatarsal and I think to myself, there needs to be a coin on the head of the metatarsal, and that makes sure that I place my osteotomy uh, apex properly. So I'm going to be making the distal aspect of my osteotomy in the cancellous head of the metatarsal and about the dorsal two-thirds of the metatarsal, and that's where one apex is going to be. And then I'll make my dorsal osteotomy about a half a centimeter to a centimeter behind the metatarsal head, I've, less, I've left the blood supply uh, into the dorsal aspect of the metatarsal. And then my proximal osteotomy is going to be back here in the plantar one-third. And I'm going to then connect those two areas. So I'm going to be in the cancellus head. I'm going to be in the cancellus proximal aspect, dorsal one-third, proximal one-third uh, to make my osteotomy. Now normally, I would be using an osteotomy guide. I use an osteotomy guide 100% um, of the time when I make my scarf osteotomy. All right, so I've completed the long arm of the osteotomy. Now I'm gonna put on a smaller blade uh, and make my dorsal and more proximal cut. So then my dorsal cut, as I said, is at about a 90 degree angle, coming straight across. And then I'll come and I'll make my proximal cut. And I'll make sure I come at my out, at my most proximal aspect. And I'm staying low in the metatarsal, and then we can see the movement of the osteotomy once I've completed it. So now we can see a nice completed long scarf. Um, you can see here, I'm just going to put the blade in, you can see we've made the cut back here, here, and here. Um, and now we have a nice mobile capital fragment. So once we have the uh, metatarsal mobile, we didn't really have deformity in this cadaver specimen. What, we, what I would normally do is take a small uh, retention device, something a little smaller than this. So what I would normally do is have somebody pull out on the proximal aspect and I'd be moving the capital fragment over 
to correct the intermetatarsal deformity. Again, this did not really have a deformity, um, but you can see the example of this being pulled away and me then pushing the capital fragment over and I'm moving a big amount of bone uh, with this. Now I've created my intermetatarsal correction and I've got a great stable osteotomy. Now I'm gonna start to fixate it. Um, when, I, when I fixate a scarf, one point of fixation goes into the head of the metatarsal. So I start about a centimeter proximal uh, to my osteotomy. And then I put my thumb on the crista and I drive the pin into that position. So the first pin that I put in is distally into the head. It is not bicortical. It's cortical to can, uh, can, uh, cancellous bone, cortical to cancellous bone. And my second pin is going to be bicortical. And it's more um, perpendicular to the osteotomy. I'm going to have to aim. I start dorsal, me uh, dorsal medial and aim plantar lateral. So feeling the cortex. And then now I'm going to um, first uh, countersink and measure uh, with this device. So going into the head, uh, I see uh, an 18 screw. And I'm now going to gently and carefully countersink to the laser line. So I've done that one. And I'll do this one. Once again, that's measuring an 18. So we'll be using two 18s on this. Now I'm going to be drilling. So I've, I've measured and countersink. Now I need to drill and, uh, and I have my laser lines at my different levels. And I know that I have to, uh, since I've measured 18, I need to get uh, to 18 and drill. So that's 10 laser line and then my next laser line would be 20. So I'm gonna approach 20, and then I'm gonna back off just less than uh, 20, which would be 18. Thankfully, the pin didn't come out with this. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that is me keeping the drill going the whole time. When you stop a drill is when you will often have the pin get stuck in it. So doing the same thing here, uh, keep that drill moving. Now I need to uh, tap, uh, but with these implants, it's important to tap. So uh, getting the tap, and once again, following my laser lines, uh, I'm gonna need to tap down to the 18. So now I'm at 10, and then doing the same thing. Um, and we need to make sure that we pass the cortex on this one, since it's a bicortical uh, screw we have to be sure that we get past the distal cortex uh, so that we get full engagement and the compression that we desire. So I'm getting close to my laser line and I'm right there and I'll be able to come out. Um, I went a little past 18 just to be sure. Um, and we're in the uh, first inner space so there's nothing to be worried about if we go a little bit too long there. And then I'm gonna place my screws. I'm gonna put uh, two 18s. So I'll take both implants right now to just show the angles. So you can see the angle of my fixation. One is going into the head, one is going by cortical. I think that's a nice representation of what we're doing. Then making sure that we're engaged in the head, really important. And we want to make sure that the screwdriver head is engaged well into the screw. And then we're starting to get ourselves into feeling really good compression here. Um, and that's in a great spot. We'll be able to take this pin out. And then we'll be putting the second screw in. Similar fashion. And now I can start to feel it engaging the distal cortex, getting great purchase, 
Great pull through, great bite. So really solid osteotomy. I pull on this, I move it up and down, no movement. Even if I put this osteotome in here, nice solid bone to bone all the way through. So as you'll notice, I have not yet uh, taken off the medial eminence. I wait to the very end for that. And then I will come and take off at this point the medial eminence. Now this isn't a patient who had a bunion before, so we're not really taking off much because there really wasn't a medial eminence to take off. But you can get the idea of the representation of what we would do. Um, also, there are times when you have a bigger deformity and the position of your screw may be sticking out so that if flattening out the metatarsal, the screw's in your way. Well, with a metallic screw, I would have to move around that. With an osteofiber screw, I can actually bevel the side of the screw and make it totally flat, where in a titanium situation, that would be impossible. And you won't lose the stability of your fixation if you remove just a little bit of the screw to create that flat surface. Also at the end of a, a procedure, I will always burr the metatarsal. And right here, this is the dorsal medial aspect of the metatarsal. It's really important to burr and smooth down this spot because sometimes you'll have a perfectly corrected metatarsal, whether it be a lapidus or first metatarsal osteotomy with a scarf or something similar, but people will still have pain here. It's really important to burr down this spot and we would burr down any of the remaining overhang that we might have from the correction. Um, so that is how we would do the scarf. Now I'm gonna move into an Aiken procedure. With the Aiken, you can see I've made my incision longer, so I'm just gonna be extending the deep part of the incision at the base of the proximal phalanx. And I'm going to be um, freeing the periosteum up at the level of the uh, proximal phalanx, uh, dorsally, and a bit plantarly. The only thing we need to be concerned about is the flexor tendon right there, so I retract underneath there, and we make sure that we've got freedom and we're not gonna cut the flexor tendon. Uh, I will usually use a freer elevator uh, right underneath here to make sure we're protecting the, uh, the phalanx, but for the purposes of this, we won't need to do that. So then we're gonna make the osteotomy for the proximal phalanx, and it's, at, it's kind of at the base of the uh, proximal phalanx. We go perpendicular uh, and we go straight across. And so we've made the osteotomy and then we're gonna make a proximal, small proximal wedge. And you can see the small wedge that I'm taking out, it's very small, it's a wafer. Um, and then I'm just gonna have to tickle my cortex. And I'm putting some pressure on the phalanx as I'm doing that to see it close. And I'm starting to see it close and I just need to tickle it a little further. And now I've got it nice and closed. And so you can, we can see here where I can shut down my, my osteotomy. So open, closed, open, closed, and that'll be how we fixate it. So pulling the capsule and periosteum distal, I'm gonna go to the uh, medial aspect of the base of the proximal phalanx. And then I'm gonna put my finger near the IPJ, the lateral aspect of the IPJ, and that's gonna be the angle that I'm gonna drive my pin. And I'm gonna feel the, just the edge of it come out, and then I'm gonna back it up a little bit. So I got my pin in place to fixate the osteotomy. I'm gonna do those same steps again, where I'm gonna first measure and then countersink. And this is measuring a 26. And then I countersink to my laser line, same way as before. Now we're going to drill. to the laser lines that are appropriate for a 26 screw. 
And then once again, I'm gonna be uh, tapping like we talked about earlier, going up to nearly a 30. Because I measured it to a 26, I wanna make sure I've got plenty of that in there. And now placing my screw like one normally would. Getting that screw, you can hear the, the squeaking of the screw and I can see the osteotomy closing down perfectly. Once I'm out, I can even hand pull out the pin and now I've got a nice closed down osteotomy, super stable. I got a stable osteotomy here, and now I can look to do my soft tissue correction. What I will do with my soft tissue correction is we will use this piece of tissue, and we're gonna pull the toe into the corrected position, and then I'm going to be using 2-0 uh, Vicryl, and I'm gonna do a pulley suture at the head of the metatarsal. I'm gonna continue it and run it distally, and then I'm gonna run it proximally, locking it along the way, so I only have two knots, one right at the head and one proximal. The less knots, the, lo the less absorption, the less swelling. Once that's all uh, corrected, I'm gonna then do a, a subcuticular closure with 5-0 Vicryl. I reinforce with Steri strips. I put a bulky compressive uh, bandage on, so it allows people versatility in life. They can return to work. They can take care of themselves in a way that most bunion surgeries don't allow. And the use of the osteofiber only enhances what I'm doing. At my first post-operative visit, when I take the bandages off and I show them the x-rays, I'm focusing on the correction, not the metal. People aren't asking me, what is all this metal? All they're looking at is, wow, look how different my foot looks on x-ray. And we never have to have a discussion about removal of fixation in the future. Uh, and people are just really pleased with the outcome. I'm excited to be able to uh, have brought osteofiber to my practice.